I've taken two dead deer and two dead cattle off this ripple. The blood run out of their noses and out of their mouths. They're trying to cover this stuff up. Wilbur Tennant. Hi friends, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Thank you so much for joining me in my lair. You know, oh my God, look at it, it's so cute. I'm so excited to be here. Welcome to my new podcast. It's called Dark History. Woo! So, you know, maybe you're wondering why Dark History? Well, over on my YouTube, you know, I do a series called Murder Mystery and Makeup, you know, where I talk about a true crime story. It's been heavy on my noggin. Well, I've always considered myself to be a little curious cat, meow. And over the last few years, while looking for true crime stories to talk about, I've come across so many stories throughout history that were just like, wow, almost unbelievable. Babe, this is murder mystery and makeup to the 10th degree. I mean, there were some wild shenanigans going down around here. Things that make you wonder why in the world did nobody teach us this in school? Like I'm talking large corporations being shady as hell, genocide, birth control, yeah, suspicious, zoot suit, syphilis. Oh, I'm talking about all the greats, baby. Syphilis, greats, I said it. Now I don't know everything, of course. I'm not here trying to pretend I do. So I've been reaching out for some insight from experts across different fields to help get these stories from history straight. It's uncomfortable, but it's the truth and there's always so much to be learned from it. Okay, I will stop rambling and let's get into today's shady ass story. So not to start off super negative, but today's story affects all of us. I know it's kind of dramatic, but literally though, this happened to all of us and is still happening today. Today's story is about an experiment, a cover up, a scam a poisoning, aqua divana. Not really, but like, I just had to add that in, you know? Anyways, this story is about what can happen when a company is left unchecked with power, control, and some shadiness going on. Imagine for a moment, your backyard. If you don't have a backyard, okay, imagine that you're outside in a yard, okay? You see the grass, a beautiful stream, water, there's some rocks, the sun is streaming down on it all. Ugh. It's so beautiful. You enjoy this yard for many years. It's your yard, your own little personal heaven. There's cows a mooing, birds chirping. You get it, it's nice out. Now imagine one day you step out onto your usual spot and you notice that the grass isn't as green as it used to be. The water in the stream isn't as clear as it once was. You don't hear the birds chirping, no cows are mooing. There's now a darkness in your once happy spot. It's just not the same. Well, this my friends is what happened to Wilbur Tennant. In the 1980s, Wilbur had run his family farm with his siblings for years. Now they weren't like crazy wealthy people. These were small town cattle farmers. You know, they lived a simple kind of life. But what they did have was a lot of bills and a lot of land. Eventually, Wilbur's family had decided to sell off some of their land to a nearby company, but they still ran the farm on the remaining property. It seemed like the right thing to do. They needed some money. It was a trusted company buying the land and they really didn't have anything to lose at that point besides the land, you know? So it just, it worked out for them. One morning in the early 1990s, Wilbur is walking around the farm. He's checking on his cattle. He's doing his thing, shaboop shabap. Anyway, he's walking around his property and he notices something strange. There's a dead cow down near the lake, like, or the creek, whatever it's called, on his property. Now it wasn't just normal dead. It was like all sorts of funky. The poor cow had blood and foam coming out of its mouth and its nose. It's pretty uncomfortable to look at, even for Wilbur, who's been around farm animals all of his life. He's seen a a dead cow or two, you know, but he's never seen one that has died looking like that. So Wilbur got a little suspicious and starts paying closer attention to what's going on in the farm. Now Wilbur was putting some pieces together. Okay, it's like coming together in his mind and realized that ever since the family sold part of their land to that company, you know, Wilbur's cows had started acting real unusual. Now Wilbur never had issues with his cows acting out of hand, but he noticed some of the more gentle ones, they were becoming just really nasty and aggressive towards him. Yeah, like the cows were just going the crazy and just getting mad. Oh my God, not mad cow though, but they were getting mad. Anyways, some of the cows had weird growths on their bodies or lost patches of their hair. And then more and more cows started dying. They're just dropping like flies 
or, or cows, I guess. Either way, but it's just not making any sense to, to Wilbur. Nothing had changed. If anyone knows cows, it's Wilbur, okay? He's been working on a farm all of his life. Of course he knows cows. So Wilbur Tennant tries to find some answers. He goes to a local vet, but the vet suggests that maybe it's something Wilbur was feeding them like it had to be. He then goes to some lawyers, politicians, even journalists, because he feels that something bigger is going on. But nobody will give him the time of day. No one will speak with him. No one will give him any help. So he's feeling frustrated, obviously, like, great, love this for me, you know? Now at this point, Wilbur decides, you know, screw it. I'm just gonna do it myself. He decides to dissect the dead cows and he records the whole thing on VHS tapes for proof. Or it's for personal use. I don't know, I'm not judging. Either way, he's got the tapes. During one of the dissections, he opened the mouth of a dead calf and discovered all of the teeth had completely gone black. Yes. He examined internal organs and saw that some just didn't look right. They were the wrong color or the wrong texture. And Wilbur ended up dissecting quite a few cows and they all had something more going on inside of them. Wilbur knew he hadn't changed their diet and it couldn't have been something that he was doing. The only thing that had changed was the tenant family selling some of their land to that company. What company was it you ask? Well, it was the biggest employer in their hometown. Let's welcome to the stage DuPont Chemical. Oh, love it. Now, DuPont wasn't just the biggest company in their town. It was the wealthiest too. Anyone and everyone who lived in town worked for DuPont. Hell, even Wilbur's brother's name's Jim. He worked for DuPont. It was the pride and joy of their town. It's how like everyone made their money. So what the hell is DuPont Chemical? Well, DuPont, I'm keeping it simple, by the way. DuPont made some groundbreaking materials like the iconic, Teflon, Mylar, and Lycra. Now these names, they might sound familiar to you because like they're literally everywhere. Teflon is a coating that is used on non-stick pans to make them, you guessed it, you smart little cookie, non-sticky. It was groundbreaking when Teflon came into the market. Now Lycra is basically spandex, also groundbreaking, okay? And it's used for sports, clothing, bathing suits, that kind of thing, also changed lives. You know, all of your stretchy pants, Lycra. So they are constantly innovating new ways to make material that is not natural. But when making chemicals, the process creates a lot of highly toxic waste. The kind of waste that would make you melt, like in the movie, Roger Rabbit, remember? Remember when that guy melts? I think it was the cartoons that melt in the tar or something, but it was terrifying as a kid. I was terrified of that. Anyways, that's what I think of the chemical waste does. Personal opinion though, I don't know. Anyways, so why did DuPont Chemical want the land anyway? It turned out that DuPont used the tenant farmland it bought as a landfill for the waste that was coming from its factory. People within the company, they named this area the Dry Run Landfill, which came from the name of the creek, the same creek that flowed into Wilbur Tennant's property, the same creek that these cows seem to be dying by. Now, ain't that some shit? Turns out, DuPont put in a large pipe that was pumping waste into Wilbur's Creek. Not just any waste, it was chemical waste. That's right. Could you imagine? The Tennant family fully believed that DuPont was putting poison in the water or some kind of chemical was coming from their plant and they had to know it. But over time, the family was getting more and more frustrated because no one seemed to care. No one seemed to show any interest as to what was happening. And a lot of people in the neighborhood, they rolled their eyes or ignored the family's claims because DuPont was, again, major for their town. Like they didn't wanna cause any drama, any problems between you know, the town and DuPont. As far as they knew, it was between Wilbur and DuPont and nobody wanted any business with that. You know, they didn't want to ruffle any feathers. So finally, somebody recommends an environmental lawyer to the tenant family that they should contact. Now this lawyer was like the grandson of someone's friend of a friend and the tenants go out on a limb and they hope that this guy will work with them. And shebang, that's how the tenants meet, attorney Rob Billet. And this is where things kick up a notch. When was the last time someone came up to you and said, oh my God, you smell amazing. What perfume are you wearing? Yeah, I know it's been a while for sure, but fragrance is personal. Whatever scent you're wearing, you know it's something that you like, but most of all works well with your body chemistry. But maybe you've been wearing the same perfume for the last couple of years because how do you even find a new fragrance that you actually like without wasting a bunch of money? Well, with Scentbird, you can find a way to have great 
great taste and change up your fragrances without breaking the bank. I'm talking the Gucci's, the Tom Ford, Versace, uh, Scentbird.com will keep you smelling good month after month month. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that gives you the opportunity to shop from over 600 brands. Now with their flexible subscription option, you can skip a month without hitting any type of penalties, or you could keep choosing a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $16. There are so many perfumes and colognes to choose from and a ton of unisex options as well. I personally am a big fan of unisex fragrances. So when I saw that, it made me happy. Okay. Now, Normally, I always stick with unisex or kind of like woodsy scented fragrances. Yes. I recently tried from Scentbird the perfume Taos Love Me, which is a wonderful blend of fizzy grapefruit, peony rose, and jasmine, which surprisingly works great with my chemistry. Most of the times, floral fragrances trigger a migraine. I just, I can't do it. But this one, oh, it smells like spring. I just, you have no idea how groundbreaking. I love that for me. With Scentbird, you can choose the perfume you wanna try and they'll send you a 30 day supply. Not sure what scent you're looking for? Well, with Scentbird, you can find a new fragrance by brand, style, occasion, season, and more. Oh, there's a huge selection of high-end fragrances, again, just for $16. And for you, my friends out here listening, you can get 30% off your first month today. That's only $11 for your first fragrance. Just go to scentbird.com and use my code DARKHISTORY for 30% off your first month. Again, that's scentbird.com for you to try your new favorite perfume or cologne for just $11. Get your smell on, babe. Sign on and smell amazing. A big thank you to Scentbird for partnering with me on today's episode. Now let's get back to the story. Rob Bellat was an environmental lawyer. He had just made partner at a law firm that pretty much only took on larger corporate clients. The law firm was called Taft, Stenius, and Hollister. I probably pronounced that wrong, but it's totally fine. It's funny because this firm and these lawyers were the kind of people that chemical companies would typically hire to defend defend against accusations that the tenants might make. It's just kind of ironic, I guess, you know? Anyways, on top of that, DuPont had worked with this firm so many times before. So it almost seems like this is a bad idea for someone, you know, like Rob, who wants to help out the tenant family. Now, it doesn't make obvious business sense to take on a case against people who could potentially be your future clients, you know? But Rob had said that he had gotten into this specialty because he did want to do good in the world and he did want to make a difference. Plus something about Wilbur's story just had really interest him and Rob felt like he could really make a difference here. So that's nice. Aww. Rob had a background specifically in compliance with Environmental Protection Agency or EPA regulations. He would help his clients manage their waste safely or at least lawfully, I should say. But the point is that he knew very well the laws in this space, what companies did put out toxic waste, where they put it, is that legal, you know? all that stuff. So with all that knowledge, plus a ton of VHS tapes, photos, and documents the Tennant family had collected over the years, Rob Bellot decided to take on the case against DuPont Chemical. And in the summer of 1999, Rob files a federal suit against DuPont Chemical in the Southern District of West Virginia. Now this is a big deal, okay? Wilbur starts to feel like this is finally gaining momentum right? Like he and his family are maybe finally going to get answers and get justice for what they've been through. I mean, they lost their farm. Well, they didn't. Okay. Look, they lost like all of their cattle and whatnot. And that is how they made their money. So, you know, they've lost it all pretty much is what I'm saying. So Wilbur is on a high. He's like, yeah, we're doing it. But then seconds later, DuPont's in-house lawyer is like, Err. no, stop. Actually, we did a study and it turns out that all your cows dying was actually your fault. Not DuPont, sorry. I mean, these lawyers are hired to protect this large corporation. What do you think they're gonna do? Just take responsibility? Oh, nay, 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 my friends, nay, nay. DuPont's lawyer, his name is Bernard. So Bernard says that DuPont and the EPA had done a study together of the property next to the tenant's farm. Now they had six veterinarians, three that DuPont hired personally and three that the EPA hired. So that should be fair, right? But the study said, according to Bernard and DuPont, that DuPont 
DuPont was not responsible for the deaths of the cows. These veterinarians said that Wilbur was responsible and had not given them proper care. So it was Wilbur's fault. He's like, get it together, Wilbur. That's not us, that's on you. They would go on to say that he was a bad farmer, he mistreated his cattle, that he must be blaming DuPont for some kind of financial gain. That selfish man, him. And I know what you're thinking. Wait, Bailey, I thought the EPA were the good guys. Nah, I'm just kidding. I know you don't know what the EPA is. So the Environmental Protection Agency, according to their website, is an independent executive agency of the United States federal government tasked with environmental protection matters. Super vague, but... Okay. Government agencies like the EPA have super close relationships with the companies and corporations in the same sector. Usually these relationships involve money. And what I'm getting at is that the EPA was working alongside DuPont Chemical. You know, they had a super intimate relationship. The EPA is supposed to be on top of DuPont, making sure that they are following the rules when it comes to their toxic ass chemicals. But I don't know. We're asking too much of the EPA, apparently. So the tenants are feeling frustrated and also just really exhausted from all of this. They're facing a ton of backlash from the community because the family was going after DuPont. Do I have to tell you again? It keeps the town running. Like, how dare they? So people are just not happy with them. It's just drama. Oh my gosh, we could do like a whole drama series on it. Expose. But the family said that they would end up having to switch churches four times during all of this due to people being super unwelcoming to the tenants. Love thy neighbor, lol. Anyway, this study wasn't making any sense to Wilbur and his family and it felt a little suspicious. Like how did DuPont Chemical have this study, quote unquote, ready so quickly? Did DuPont anticipate something like this might've happened, you know, and just had the study ready to go? Hmm. Well, back with Rob the lawyer, he decides to go hard through the massive amounts of papers, documents, records, VHS tapes from DuPont's files. Then one day while he's digging around doing his research, he finds a letter from DuPont to the EPA. Oh yeah, it's worth like a second look, right? What is this? This is a little weird. In the letter, it was mentioned by DuPont that there was a chemical substance found at their dry run landfill site, the one um, near Wilbur, remember? Yeah, well, and this chemical substance was different. It was one that they had never recognized before. DuPont managed a ton of chemicals at their dump sites all day, every day. So coming across a chemical that they didn't recognize was different. This substance was called PFOA. Rob the lawyer. He's like, yeah, what is PFOA? Yeah, I know, What what is PFOA? He can't find anything on it in his usual resources. Not the library, not lists of regulated materials. It's just nowhere to be found. Finally, he gets in touch with a chemistry expert on the phone. He's like, bing, bing, hey, this expert tells Rob like, hey, I don't know what PFOA is. Okay, he's not familiar with it, but he was familiar with something similar, PFOS, which is the same thing, but it's like along the same lines, but it's not the same thing. It's so complicated, like chemistry is complicated and I'm not gonna try and like teach you chemistry right now, but it's kind of the same, okay? Anyways, I think though that these companies, they use like all these acronyms, technical words, mumbo jumbo, because they don't want people like the tenants to understand what they're talking about. They don't want to even like rob the lawyer to understand. It's better for them to create confusion, make people think they're just stupid, or maybe that they just don't understand enough. But hey, what the hell do we know? So Rob, the lawyer, he goes to DuPont and he asks like, what in the hell is PFOA? And that they needed to hand over all the information and materials related to PFOA and DuPont it's like, no, they refuse. Well, luckily, Rob, he is a lawyer. So he files a court order, which is granted to get DuPont to share the documents. DuPont wins douche of the year because they sent over dozens of boxes filled to the brim with countless documents, just like they wanted the paperwork to be confusing. They wanted the materials to be overwhelming in number. This is how a company like DuPont can create darkness while seeming to operate in the light. They act like they're helping and doing the right thing. Here are the documents and all the evidence you need. Oh my God, we're amazing, you know? But the reality is they are bearing and hiding the truth, knowing that whoever goes looking for it really has to work hard to find it. The truth that is, is what we're talking about. The truth, it's hard to find. 
So it's now the year 2000 and Rob, the lawyer, he's been working hard sifting through all of these documents that DuPont Chemical had sent over. It's been months, months he's been going through all of the paperwork. Rob has been scanning and quickly reading the documents as best as he could. Eventually though, like just going through tons and tons of information, Rob comes across a document that showed DuPont knew that this chemical PFOA was indeed coming from DuPont and that it was indeed dangerous. Not only only were they acknowledging this, but it was clear to Rob that DuPont had known about this, like PFOA being dangerous, for a very long time. This episode is sponsored by Apostrophe, a prescription skincare company for people that are ready to take their acne seriously. Prescription acne treatment really works, but it can be hard to get. You have to take time off of work to see a doctor, sit in line at your local pharmacy for your medications. If you don't have insurance, good luck, you know, until. Apostrophe. Apostrophe makes it easy to see board certified dermatologists online. You'll get treated immediately and your medications are delivered to your home. Simply fill out Apostrophe's online questionnaire about your skin concerns and medical history. Then, just snap a few selfies of your lovely skin and your dermatologist will get back to you with a customized treatment plan tailored just for you. The best part is that Apostrophe offers topical and oral medications so you can treat your acne from the inside out and the outside out. In. Apostrophe treats acne and they can also help you hit your other skincare goals like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even those stubborn dark spots. Now Apostrophe is something I can definitely get behind. Over on my YouTube channel, I did a video about my acne struggles and I mentioned seeing a dermatologist, blah, 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 all that nonsense, but they prescribed me the same medication and skincare routine that Apostrophe offers. I was like, what? I don't have to go to the dermatologist? I could do this online? I was so excited when I saw this. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. Because it may not look like it now, but my acne had gotten so bad. Adult acne is a cruel joke, okay? Because I never had acne until I had gotten to be an adult. And all of a sudden, acne. But luckily, there are products that can help. And of course, medication isn't for everyone, but the apostrophe questionnaire makes sure to pair you with the right routine for you. You can get $15 off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash dark history and use code dark history. This code is only available to my listeners right now. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash dark history and click begin visit. Then use the code dark history at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's apostrophe, A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash dark history and use code dark history to get your dermatology visit for $15 off. I want to say a big thank you to Apostrophe for sponsoring today's episode. And now let's get back to the story. Now remember Teflon, super iconic invention that made your food not stick to your pan? Groundbreaking. Well, in order to make Teflon, you need the magic chemical PFOA. And DuPont began using more and more PFOA. They were educated on the specific ways in which to dispose this chemical. Like they were supposed to incinerate it or they were supposed to send it off to a specific chemical waste facility who then properly disposes it. Yeah, trying to get rid of waste is like a whole process. So yeah, they were told this. And of course, there's that warning section at the bottom, you know, when they're getting their education on that says like, hey, this chemical shouldn't be flushed away into water or sewers. But like nobody reads that far though, you know? Anyway, so with all this information was found within the documents DuPont sent raw, which also were revealing that DuPont Chemical had been pumping hundreds of thousands of pounds of PFOA powder from their Parkersburg facility into the Ohio River. And not only that, they had been pumping it into the river for decades. Yeah, just putting it in the river. Cool. So what happens when a company pumps out that kind of like substance and it mixes with the water? Well, the tainted water goes through the pumps and lands into pits. Normally these pits would be lined for some protection, but the Parkersburg pits were not. Well, when there's like no protection down in the pit, the water then becomes one with the ground. The ground, the land, it absorbs the water. 
And then when the tainted water from DuPont Chemicals sat in those pits, it was absorbed right into the ground baby and it sank right into the local water supply, the drinking water supply for over 100,000 people in West Virginia. Now for Rob, the lawyer, this case went from the tenant family and their sad cows to now something that like affected a whole lot more people than they expected. It was clear that DuPont Chemical had all these instructions telling them how to get rid of PFOA properly and they just didn't follow them. But Rob then found records showing DuPont Chemical had done their own funded top secret medical study on PFOA and its effects on people for 40 years. They know a lot. According to their own study, DuPont knew that PFOA could increase the size of liver in rats, rabbits, and dogs. They knew that their Parkersburg employee had high concentrations of PFOA in their blood. Oh, and they decided not to tell the EPA or anyone about it. No, they're just too busy. DuPont knew PFOA could cause birth defects in rats. They ran tests on their employees' children. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They tested on children and they determined that two of seven live births resulted in eye defects. By 1991, DuPont Chemical had an internal safety limit for PFOA concentration in water. DuPont felt they knew how much could safely be in drinking water based on their own studies, but they didn't want to say what that safe number was, but they knew what it was, but they're not going to tell you what it was. It's like you're just playing games with a three-year-old, you know, it's just whatever this secret number was. DuPont learned that a local district had three times the secret number amount in their drinking water. There was just a ton of PFOA going on in the waters and nothing was said. Well, DuPont scientists found out that PFOA caused cancerous tumors in lab animals and might result in prostate cancer in humans. After this discovery, it was brought to DuPont's attention, but they did nothing with that information. They were like, okay, thanks, that's super helpful no action was taken. DuPont had bought the tenant farmland to use as a place to dump their waste, waste that they knew had the poisonous PFOA in it. They knew that it drained into the tenant's current property and they knew that the water in the shared creek had incredibly, insanely high concentrations of this poison. I'm gonna call it poison for a little while because that's what it is. Okay, DuPont knew it all along and they still produced that garbage report blaming the death of the cows on just poor care. What? douche canoes. Rob Bellot, the lawyer, he made his case. And in late 2000, the tenants came to a settlement agreement with DuPont Chemical. Rob got his fee and the case was closed before it ever reached trial. So is that it? Does this all go away quietly? Did the tenants get like, I don't know, some money to make up for the dead cows? And DuPont just gets to go on pumping that poison into the waters of West Virginia? Well, when you really think about it, water just doesn't stop at state lines, you know? Like water doesn't know what a state line is. So maybe this story would end there. But once again, nay, nay, of course it does not. Now Rob, the lawyer, he was really angry, okay? DuPont didn't just know about the poison. They had known about it for decades and they knew it was in the drinking supply and they hid that from the government and they hid that from the public. In the year 2000, the manufacturer that they used to purchase PFOA from stopped making the substance. So DuPont then started making it themselves and they just kept raking in the profits. So Rob tried to take this information public. He wrote a 972 page brief called for immediate regulations for clean water for those nearby. Now he sent this 972 page brief, which like, how was that brief? But okay. But he sent all of that to the directors of all the regulatory agencies in the US. So I think the EPA, even the US Attorney General, DuPont, requested a gag order, essentially confirming to the public that they didn't want this report to get out. And people began to think like, hmm, you know, maybe there's something more to this damn story. Like maybe this is worth paying attention to. Today's episode is brought to you by Wicked Clothes. Have you heard of Wicked Clothes? Okay, look, they sell clothing that's kind of dark. It's kind of creepy, kind of funny, but it's cute. It's really cute. You need to check out their designs over on their website, wickedclothes.com. Just take a second to browse because their artwork is the best. Oh, they have shirts, crew neck, anything about ghost hunting, the Mothman, lots of paranormal options, and a little bit of death and bones scattered about too. But they made it cute, you know? I'm wearing the Mothman sweatshirt right now. It's one of my favorites. I 
Love anything Mothman, first of all. Thank you so much. I need to go visit the Mothman statue and I'm gonna wear this. But this is currently one of my favorite sweatshirts I got. I've actually purchased from Wicked Clothes before they reached out and wanted to sponsor and I was so excited when they did. I was like, yes, I love you guys. I was thrilled to say the least because they make such cute designs. There's great options and most of all, the pieces are comfy. Do yourself a favor and check out wickedclothes.com and use coupon dark history to get 10% off. Also, if you wanna save some time, you can get that coupon automatically applied by going to the link wickedclothes.com slash dark history. A big thank you to Wicked Clothes for partnering with me on today's episode. Now let's get back to the show. The gag order was denied. I, I think the real question here is like, why do they call it a gag order? Cause I mean, it just sounds so violent. Like gag, oh my God. Rob wanted this taken on across the country. This wasn't just going to hit DuPont. This would affect all the players in the industry making these man-made or synthetic materials. Most people in the United States, they thought, or we think, if something is dangerous, it's regulated. But that wasn't true. Oh, and P.S., it's still not true. But the 1976 Toxic Substance Control Act says that the EPA can only test chemicals when they are provided with proof that the chemicals cause harm. So what they're saying is they can't test it until they already know it's dangerous, which makes a lot of sense. But the EPA isn't even in the business of making and finding new chemicals or new materials. These large companies are the ones doing that, right? Like they're the ones making it. So the companies have that information and because of this law the companies control the EPA's access to the proof that it's dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Like they can hide the proof of harm and avoid EPA testing and avoiding regulations. You know, they don't want to follow the rules or regulations because that would just cost them money. I mean, look how cheap they are. They wouldn't even um, line their pits or properly dispose of the chemicals. I guess in order to make a lot of money, you have to cut a lot of corners. Greed is such an ugly color, isn't it? In 2005, thanks to Rob, the lawyer, DuPont reached a $16.5 million settlement with the EPA after they were finally found in violation of the Toxic Substances Act. They paid the fine, which was the largest civil penalty the EPA had ever charged a company within its history. To someone like me and you, like that seems like a lot of money, you know, don't get me wrong, 60 million, yeah, I'll take it. That's a lot of money. But you and I both know, okay? You have to think about it, the, the bigger scale here. This is a giant company that made giant profits and they paid off that fine with less than 2% of what they made selling products that used PFOA in just that year, in just the year 2005. And they'd been making those profits for decades. So Rob, he also filed a civil action lawsuit against DuPont Chemical. He had to prove that PFOA was not safe, that it was not at safe levels in the drinking water of the people he represented. And through his tenacity and creativity, he was able to get DuPont to settle in September of 2004. Now the company agreed to install water filtration plants in the affected district and they also agreed to fund a study without limitations to determine if there was a probable link between PFOA and diseases in human. Now, if the link was found, then DuPont also agreed to pay for medical monitoring for all of the affected groups in this lawsuit. The total settlement came to sum of like $21.7 million and the law firm didn't lose any money and the districts had clean water, but there was a lot more to do. The lawyers with the votes of all the people they represented used the settlement money for medical testing and research, all of which DuPont had to foot the bill for totaling around $33 million. So they do this big um, medical research study and it ends up taking seven years. So friends, the scientific study took quite some time. And during that time, a bunch of the class members, AKA the people who were in the lawsuit, they were diagnosed with cancer, sadly. Wilbur Tennant was also diagnosed with cancer and then he would die from a heart attack. And then his wife, she also died of cancer two years later. The team of scientists began releasing results at the end of 2011. They found that there was a probable link between PFOA exposure and get ready for this list. Kidney cancer, testicular cancer, thyroid disease, high cholesterol, preeclampsia, ulcerative colitis, I nailed that one, pregnancy-induced hypertension, and elevated cholesterol levels. So it seems like Rob, the lawyer, he finally had his proof. 
PFOA was poison for sure. We should be calling this aqua tofana, and it was literally everywhere, okay? You might be thinking to yourself, oh man, that's super sad, super messed up, and like, thank goodness I don't live in West Virginia, or like, thank God I wasn't around back then, woo! But I want you to know that if you are in the United States, Nay, nay, you, my friend, may have been affected. Recently, I've been looking for a new puzzle game to play on my phone that would give me a good challenge. Something that would actually challenge my noggin a bit, you know? And that's when I came across Best Fiends. Best Fiends, what is it you ask? Well, it's a mobile puzzle game that will challenge your brain. It's kind of like you did a workout, but for your brain. Best Fiends is way more fun than other puzzle games. You know the ones that involve candy that you can't eat? Yeah, I can't put it down. Plus, Best Fiends has literally thousands of fun puzzles to solve. I'm currently on level 30 with a lot more to go. There's something new to play every day and the characters are just absolutely adorable. Best Fiends is constantly putting out updates so there's always something new and exciting to explore. Whenever I'm feeling a little bored or have some time to kill between Zoom meetings or on the toilet, you know, whatever, I bust out my phone and go straight to Best Fiends to tackle some puzzles. Download the five star rated puzzle puzzle game Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Now let's get back to today's story. In 2002, the EPA found that it wasn't just drinking water, but also the general public at risk. Anyone who used Teflon pans to cook with, for example, what the super iconic Teflon pans that were literally in every household also had PFOA. Yes and it was being like cooked right into the food. Mm -mm. And you ate it, not you, but like, you know, you might've, but not you. Anyways, the EPA also found out that PFOA had made its way into American blood banks. People were donating their blood, which very nice of them, we applaud them. They didn't know that they had PFOA in their blood and it was donated. So then like PFOA is just like, it's raining PFOA. By 2003, it was estimated that the average American adult had a concentration of PFOA in their blood of four to five parts per billion. In America today, nearly every person is likely to have PFOA in their blood. Yes, it's in you. Manufactured chemicals have been found in 94 different water districts across 27 different states, and they've been found, PFOA, it's been found in the blood of salmon, swordfish, sea turtles, sea lions, polar bears. I mean, the list can really go on here, you know? So new studies on these types of chemicals appear all the time, and the evidence continues to suggest that these man-made chemicals have complex effects. In 2014, it was found that breastfeeding is a major source of exposure. Other studies found that exposure during infancy is associated with immune deficiency. Now, researchers in Italy, let me tell you, they found a link between exposure to these chemicals and lower sperm counts, lower sperm mobility, and shorter penis says yeah you heard me right, no need to rewind 15 seconds. Shorter penises. In October of 2016, 3,535 people filed personal injury lawsuits against DuPont Chemicals. The first actually to go to trial was Carla Bartlett, I believe, who survived kidney cancer. Now she was awarded $1.6 million. The company would pay out an additional 670 million to 3,550 people who were exposed to PFOA. Eventually, DuPont stopped producing and using PFOA in 2013. And the five other companies worldwide that used it also began phasing it out, which reminds me, I forgot to look up what those five other companies were. Oops, go Google it, let me know. Anyways, so in 2015, DuPont made a new corporation called Chemers. And now Chemers uses a similar, different compound that is supposed to biodegrade at a faster pace. I roll, sure. Which they knew about this quote unquote safer compound for more than 20 years. But of course it took the lawsuits, the EPA, national attention to make them think like, hey, maybe we should make this switch. Maybe we should care or pretend to care. This alternative compound by the way, unregulated. Yeah, said it, unregulated. So no idea if it's actually safe or not. And they've given us no reason to believe them. So once again, cool, love that. But don't worry you guys, don't freak out because Kemmers, AKA DuPont, they say it's totally safe. It doesn't seem like Rob, the lawyer, 
believes them either. Every single year, Rob writes a letter to the EPA urging regulation of PFOA in drinking water. They have an advisory setting for these levels, but that is all and like nobody knows what that means. Do you know what that means? No, exactly. Nobody knows what that means. Nobody knows. In 2016, Rob told the New York Times, quote, we told the agencies about this in 2001 and they've essentially done nothing. That's 14 years of this stuff continuing to be used, continuing to be in the drinking water all over the country. DuPont just quietly switches over to the next substance. End quote. Kemmers, which operates and runs the original facility in Parkersburg, still produces products to make Teflon. I'm laughing because like, yeah, they're still making them. Like, oh yeah, babe, it's all around you. Turn around right now, it's PFOA, it's right behind you. You know, like, it's everywhere. They're still producing it and still dumping it away. Oh, and, and more DuPont spinoff companies are out there, like Dow Inc. It's like we're in some weird twilight zone, you know? So people were concerned and following closely the DuPont chemical case, but the message so far was DuPont did something bad, they paid a fine, they did some testing and like found a backup, or they changed their name, moved things around and no one went to jail, the end. You know, like that's what the story was. So anyways, these corporations learned the true power or true lack of power that regulatory agencies have in the United States and in a world that mistrusts science, underfunds research, and allows for people to bounce back and forth between government jobs and corporate jobs in the same field. What chances do we have to stop the next DuPont chemical disaster? I mean, it's probably already happened, shit. Unfortunately, bad news for us, uh, different variations of this poison are still in our drinking water. Yes, we are poisoned. And it's in everyday materials that you think of as second nature. Remember how I mentioned the story affects you? Well, it does because you have a very high chance of having PFOA in your blood. To keep it simple, our body just doesn't have the ability to break down the chemical. And when you really think about it, it isn't that gross. Because of DuPont, you have this thing in you, right? And like, you would think that would make more noise, you know? If the EPA couldn't or wouldn't stop DuPont, well, what can we do about it, you know? Like, who the hell are we? And these large corporations, they're just clearly making us ill. What can we do about it? I personally really admire Rob, the lawyer, Wilbur, and the tenants for their bravery to go after a large company like DuPont. I mean, that's ballsy. That takes some serious balls. Also, for the years of dedication to seeking justice and for seeking the truth. I'm a sucker for a good old fashioned um, David and Goliath type story, but I wish I could say like the little guy won here, but we did not. DuPont is a good example as how important it is to push for actual environmental regulations, not just to save the trees or the whales. I mean, yeah, those things are great. Of course we wanna save those but literally to protect yourself from these large corporations who wanna take advantage of us and our bodies plus the lands that we live on. Look, you don't deserve to get poisoned over eggs not sticking to your pan. I just quickly wanna take this moment and give a big thank you to DuPont Chemical for all of their beautiful secrets that have affected all of us. I appreciate that. Oh, also guys, you can totally blame your small, you know, your small member on DuPont. Just saying, it's an opportunity. When I first read about the story, I found it super fascinating because Rob uncovered a pretty large secret, right? DuPont was poisoning the water and all of us with the chemicals in their products. This was proven, this was proven and nothing happened. Why? This question literally keeps me up at night. We have these chemicals in our blood from products that we've been sold and they've been proven to make people sick. I mean, isn't that enough? You would think, right? Isn't that a bit concerning to anybody? You know, what do we do with this information? And honestly, I think that's a great question. I guess step one is bringing awareness, right? But if DuPont got away with poisoning all of us for so long, what could everyone else be hiding? And what can we do to stop this from happening again? I wanna know, I need, I, cause we need some answers here. We need a plan. Let's continue this conversation. Hop on over to Twitter using the hashtag dark history and uh, let me know what you think. Anyways, if you enjoyed this story, join me over on my YouTube where you can watch these episodes after the podcast airs and also catch my murder mystery and makeup, which drops every Monday. Now I told you today it would be a little dark. It's in the title, so just get over it, okay? Anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You make good choices. Try to get some sleep tonight, even though you've been poisoned. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye. 
Dark History is an Audio Boom original. Executive producers include Chelsea Durgan from Slash Management and Brent Montgomery, Ed Simpson, Fanny Baudry, Afi Gandhi, and Daryl Christian from Wheelhouse. Video directors Trent Barboza and Spencer Strathmore. Producer Lexi Kaivin. Research provided by Elizabeth Hyman. Written by Sarah Camino and Haley Gordon. And hosted by me, Princess of the Dark, Bailey Sarian. <laughs>